From the very outset of his Khilafat, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih II Razi ta'ala anhu, ensured that the members of his community were educated and that he spread the message of Islam and Ahmadiyyat as far and wide as he possibly could. Now, along with this, Hazrat Musa Maud Razi ta'ala anhu, also ensured to put an end to any type of dissension which was brewing in the minds of some of those within the community. Now, all these matters continued throughout his Khilafat, but merely within the first few years, the fruits of his efforts became ever more apparent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to another episode of Ahmadiyyat Roots to Branches. I came merely to sow the seed. That seed has been sown by my hands. It will now grow and blossom forth and none dare impede its growth. Ahmadiyyat, the true Islam, is a flourishing tree. But this is not just any tree. This is the tree, the seed of which was sown under the guidance of Allah Himself through the hands of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi. Its miraculous growth in the midst of difficult and seemingly impossible circumstances is indeed a tale that is bound to increase one's faith, as if this is the tree that grew from concrete. Presently, under the guidance and leadership of our beloved Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hands, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat is now present and propagating the peaceful message of Islam in over 200 countries around the world. The Jamaat has built over 15,000 mosques, over 30 hospitals, and over 500 schools. It has translated the Holy Quran into over 70 languages. This is but merely a glimpse at the progress and a fraction of the achievements of Ahmadiyyat in only one single century. But this is Ahmadiyyat at present. Let us now take a step back and witness exactly how Ahmadiyyat, by the sheer grace of Allah, reached this point and attained these heights. For history is not only a means to understand and appreciate the present, but also a means to envision the future. Follow us on this journey. On today's episode of Rooster Branches, we will be taking a look at some of the prominent writings of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih II, anhu, in which he refuted allegations such as those who leveled dissension against the community, as well as those who leveled false allegations against the truthfulness of the Prophethood of the Promised Messiah. We will then take a look at the first newspaper which was established during the time of the Second Khilafat, which also served the purpose of refuting allegations leveled against Ahmadiyyat and providing its own very solid and irrefutable evidences. We will then take a look at how the efforts of Tabligh made by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II anhu, also began to bear fruits even more so as communities were established within Mauritius and Ahmadiyyat was also established in Australia. We will then move on to a memorial which was sent by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to the British government of India at that time, which clearly proved that it was the Ahmadiyya Muslim community which followed the true teachings of Islam. Then we will take a look finally at the visit of two Englishmen to Qadian and their encounters with Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II, Razi ta'ala anhu. But first, let us begin by taking a look at a very prolific writing of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II, Razi ta'ala anhu, in which he refuted the allegations of those who attempted to create a dissension within the Ahmadiyya community. Now, just to briefly recap, we know that Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib had presented a lecture on the topic of the internal dissension within the community and its reasons. Now, we know that Hazrat Muslimud radiyallahu anhu had uh, presented a re response to this lecture in 1915. Now, although this response was simply 78 pages, but what makes this response incredible is that it was written in a, day, in a single day. Now, we know that Hazrat Muslimud radiyallahu anhu states that ultimately I favored myself to write the response to Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib's work. 
Uh, but initially, I had given this task to Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib, Raziyallahu Anhu. But on the 21st of January, when I myself had written, read, read the work of uh, Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib, it came to me as a shock and a surprise. Uh, he stated that uh, Khalifatul Masih al Awwal, Raziyallahu Anhu, and myself held the same beliefs uh, regarding Khilafat that uh, Khalifatul Masih al Awwal, Raziyallahu Anhu, God forbid, was against the institution of Khilafat. Hazrat Muslim Maud radiallahu anhu stated that anyone who is familiar with the lectures and the speeches of Khalifatul Masih al Awwal radiallahu anhu, he would also be shocked to read the statements made by Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib, and he would point out that these are simply allegations leveled by Khwaja Kamaluddin Sahib. Last year, in the year 2015, Jamaat Ahmadiyya Mauritius commemorated a hundred years since its inception as an official branch of the Ahmadiyya Community International. Now, so many things go into a Jamaat's history, but uh, the inception of this Jamaat was truly exceptional and uh, perhaps most uh, worthy of note amongst so many of the pieces that make up its rich historical uh, countenance and significance. Basa Sahib, what can you tell us about the actual uh, onset, the inception of this community? the Jamaat Ahmadiyya and Mauritius. Yes. A full hundred years back from the celebration of the Jamaat last year, in 1915, was in fact the arrival of Hazrat Sufi Ghulam Muhammad Sahib to the island of Mauritius. But before that, if we go into history, it will come to our knowledge that Ahmadis, in fact, were already very active within Tablig efforts in, in this small island. To the extent that persecution had come to such a degree that when Sufi Saib came to the port in the Mauritius Islands, the newspaper Le Petit Journal demanded the government that they disallow him from entering the country and send him right back to India from where he came. Now from the grace of God the Almighty, this was turned down, Sufi Saib came in, and of some of the prominent people that had already converted to the Jamaat before the arrival of Maulana Sahib, Noor Muhammad Sahib's house was attached to a certain mosque in that area. And when Maulana Sufi Sahib came, he began to offer namaz in that masjid. At this masjid, the Ahmadis who were a good congregation in of themselves would offer Bajamat namaz on their own, whereas the non-Ahmadis would have their own Bajamat namaz at their specific times right after the other. When Sufi Saab's influence and the beauty of his arguments and lectures increased, the Imam and in fact the president of that mosque right beside Nur Muhammad Saab's house began following under the Imamat of Maulana Sufi Ghulam Muhammad Sahib. This caused not an uproar, but in fact, a disagreement amongst the Muslims. And this disagreement reached an extent where the non ahmadi Muslims simply became disinterested in coming to the masjid and stopped coming to the masjid altogether. This sentiment increased. There was already opposition. Persecution had sporadically began. And only nine months after Sufi Saab had been offering namaz at this masjid had not passed that as a group, non ahmadi Muslims went to the federal government and demanded at an institutional level that the Ahmadis be considered non-Muslims already, just a few months had passed. This case, this famous case took about two years to complete and from, by the grace of God the Almighty, uh, the decision came in support of Ahmadiyyat, wherein Ahmadis were considered Muslims by law but for the sake of protection and from disorder, they were told not to go offer namaz, bajamat, or in congregation within the non ahmadi mosques. This was very important because as a result of this, the Ahmadis were in fact pushed to build their own masjid. And that is exactly what they did. With the much support from the Banu family, a very good and well-off and respected and noble family of the Mauritius Islands, the first masjid that ran under the Jamaat was uh, constructed in the year 1926. The Banu family is also a very, very interesting chapter in the history of Jamaat Mauritius. And we are going to go back to Sabahat Saab, 
who will tell us a bit about this Banu family. Jazakallah, Basra Sahib. Uh, you're absolutely right. You mentioned the Banu family. In fact, the Banu family was particularly a, a seed that was divinely uh, sown into the grounds uh, of Mauritius, specifically for this task, that Allah Ta'ala had created a family that would become the means of a lot of great progress. See, what this family did was that uh, first they would invite Sufi Ghulam Muhammad Sahib, the uh, original missionary uh, that uh, Basa Sahib you mentioned, uh, over to their house for various dialogues. And they were uh, so impressed by these intermittent uh, visits and the dialectics and the beauty of his uh, argument and the education that he brought that uh, they would invite him back time and time again. And finally, uh, the second time actually that they officially invited him uh, to their house, they were so impressed with what he had to say was that the entire family, and what a large family it was, uh, accepted Islam and Ahmadiyyat uh, on the spot. But what's amazing about their faith was that they didn't just accept Ahmadiyyat, but they said that we need a missionary here at all times, a mu'allim, a teacher, a, a guide, a representative of the Khalif al Masih with us. And we desire a person uh, like this. So they actually said that out of our own pocket, we will bear the expenses of uh, having a missionary come here. As a result of this, Hazrat Musleh Maud radiallahu anhu uh, sent very graciously the young Hafiz Ubaidullah Sahib uh, to be the missionary there and he arrived there in 1917 and he was a missionary there until the year 1923 uh, when he passed away and so many wonderful services were uh, rendered by uh, this uh, missionary as well the Hafiz Sahib and what's really brilliant just bringing everything uh, back home Basa Sahib is that despite the persecution despite everything the Jamaat in those few years just two or three years flourished and the mosque was established and all of those roots took hold that were required for a successful Jamaat uh, to, to flourish uh, in, the, in the near future. In March of 1915, Hazrat Muslim Maud Anhu published a book entitled Hakikat al Nabuwa, or The Truth of Prophethood. And he wrote this book spanning 300 pages which he wrote in only 20 days in response to an article which was written against the Ahmadiyya community saying that Ahmadis degrade, you know, and we seek uh, refuge from this, that Ahmadis degrade the stature of the Holy Prophet by accepting the promised Messiah to be a prophet. Now, Hazrat Muslim Maud answered every single aspect of this. He took every single aspect of the prophethood of the promised Messiah and explained it with great care and great intricacy. And he touched upon every single possible point so that no one would be able to raise any allegation after having read this book. Now, Hazrat Muslim Maud at one instance writes regarding those who raise this allegation that can these people see our hearts? He says, take my own example. For me, the Holy Prophet وسلم, is everything. He is my life. He is my goal. He is what I try to achieve. Everything which I do revolves around the Holy Prophet So how can such an allegation be raised against us? So in this way, Hazrat Muslim Maud proved without a shadow of a doubt that in no way did Ahmadis degrade the stature of the Holy Prophet Now similarly, later on in October of 1915, Hazrat Muslim Maud established a newspaper known as Farooq. And uh, the first editor of this newspaper was Mir Qasim Ali Sahib Anhu. Now in the first edition of this newspaper, Hazrat Muslim Maud himself wrote an article in which he outlined the primary responsibilities which this newspaper would serve. And he said that, this newspaper has been established to refute all those allegations which are leveled against Ahmadis and to do so in such a way that we present very strong, very solid and very irrefutable arguments so as uh, to refute any type of allegation raised against us. So in this way, Hazrat Muslim Maud continued uh, his journey of defending Ahmadiyyat at every single step. There was a very pious individual who lived in Australia who in fact was a companion of the promised Messiah His name was Hazrat Hassan Musa Khan Sahib anhu. Now we know that he lived in Qadian during the era of Khalifatul Masih al-Awwal anhu. 
But unfortunately, due to some complications, he was unable to take the bath at the hands of Hazrat Khalifatul Masisani, Raziallahu Anhu. Now, this all changed on the 11th of July, 1915, when he had pledged the oath of allegiance through a letter that he had sent to Qadian. Hazrat Hassan Musa Khan Sahib, Raziallahu Anhu, was a very devout preacher and a diligent worker for the Jamaat. He had established a community in the city of Brisbane and had sent literature to the, to the country of Fiji. Now, during this time, there was another historical event taking place in the Jamaat, and that was Hazrat Qazi Muhammad Abdullah Sahib, Raziallahu Anhu, who was sent to England for the purpose of the belief. Now, Hazrat Muslim Oud, Raziallahu Anhu, had handwritten him very special and valuable advice for this trip. Hazrat Muslim Oud, Raziallahu Anhu, stated that we travel to Europe to conquer it, not to be conquered. Secondly, we shouldn't be attracted by the many attractions which we see in Europe. Rather, we should bring people to Islam. We should eat and dress moderately. When we speak with people regarding the doctrines of Islam, we should do so with sincerity and love in our voice. Whenever we are faced with any problems, we should pray towards God Almighty. We should adopt mysticism and spirituality. And the last point that Hazrat Muslim Oud anhu made was that the hajjid is a great weapon. It should be utilized for the purpose of tabligh. In the year 1915, the British government of India asked all the Muslims residing in India whether they wanted their matters of inheritance to be governed according to their own traditions or according to the Sharia. Now, the Muslims of India gave differing answers. Some would say that they wanted uh, it to be governed according to their own traditions. Some said according to the Sharia. Now, it was seen that when these matters would be governed according to people's own traditions, the cases would take too long. So the government said that all these groups of Muslims should send their traditions to us and we will compile a book which would be the governing uh, book or the governing law and all the traditions would be combined and according to them, these matters would be governed. Now upon this, Hazrat Muslim Aud advised his community. He said that you know, no matter which family we belong to, no matter the caste or the tribe or whichever group we may belong to, at the end of the day, we are Muslims. And in being so, we've come under the Sharia. So our matters should be governed according to the Sharia. And a memorial regarding this and informing the government of this uh, should be written. So the community, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, uh, wrote a memorial to the British government of India informing them regarding this. And it is seen that when the book uh, of traditions was compiled uh, by the government, regarding the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, it was stated that the family of Mughal Barlas of Qadiyan Tahseel Batala is governed by Muhammadan law. So, Amongst all the Muslims of India, it was the Ahmadiyya Muslim community who came to the forefront and said that we being Muslims must be governed by the Sharia. And in doing so, they proved that it was truly the Ahmadis who followed the true teachings of Islam. The year 1916 marked one of the most landmark uh, years within the administration of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih II Anhu's Khilafat. What we have to remember is that uh, he was still very young, around 30 years old, and it was the first five years uh, of his Khilafat after all. Yet, the succour and the assistance from the heavens was absolutely consistent and totally unwavering. Yes. Right, so what's up? There was, there was a genius to Hazrat al-Muslim that manifested in, in one of the projects that he launched in the year 1916. As we all know, one of the most significant historic sites in the history of the Jamaat was the house of Hazrat Sufi Ahmad Jan Sahib anhu, in whose house took place the first pledge of initiation that is the Bayat, now known as the Darul Bayat. From the decades of time that had passed, the conditions had become deteriorated and much renovation had been needed. And you can see Hazrat Al-Muslim Maud Anhu's desire to preserve these sacred sites for the future generation to benefit from. And so this was one of the major projects that were launched. Now in those times, uh, only a certain degree of renovation was done. There was an extra room added, some extra prayer space was created in that time. And a final concrete renovation took place in the year 1939. At the same time, in the same year, a divine sign that is a prophecy of the promised Messiah titled Ta'i Ai also found its fulfillment in the same year in 1916. During the time of the promised Messiah, his elder brother's wife 
that is Hurmat Bibi Sahiba, had never had the opportunity to accept the truth of Ahmadiyyat. And her opposition remained equally firm in the time of Khalifa al Masih al-Awwal radiallahu anhu. But this prophecy dictated in fact that this lady was going to convert and accept the truth of the promised Messiah salatu wasalam. And the three main points we find in this prophecy are that her acceptance would be at the hand of a son of the promised Messiah salatu wasalam. That son of the promised Messiah salatu wasalam in fact at the time would be the Khalifa. And the third point was is that she will in fact remain alive in those circumstances and accept the truth of the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam. And in the month of March in the year 1916, this prophecy was fulfilled when she accepted the truth of Ahmadiyyat at the hand of Hazrat Khalifa al Sani radiallahu anhu. But we are also aware that many other very important and significant events occurred in this very year. So if I could ask Sabahat Sahib, can you please tell us about some of those events? You know, you mentioned the prophecy of uh, Ta'ayai and uh, there are a lot of prophecies that were literally vouchsafed to the Promised Messiah Islam, with specific words from God. But there were certain desires of the Promised Messiah Islam, that were also fulfilled um, and the indignation of God did not permit that they should go unfulfilled. For example, Mia Bashir Ahmad Sahib radiallahu anhu M.A. in this very year uh, received his degree as well his masters and uh, he mentions uh, when many people wrote letters of congratulations to him um, and happiness he says that this was not possible except that the promised messiah Islam, had expressed uh, a, a, a deep desire that i should get my ma and it is as a result of his deep desire that today i have received this then of course uh, there was the great jalsa from the third of march to the 6th of March, 1916, that took place in uh, Delhi. And this Jalsa was uh, visited by various uh, hallmark companions of the Promised Messiah, Islam. but of course the keynote speech was Hazrat Musleh Ma'ud anhu, who delivered a grand speech on the topic of Islam in Tabligh, and uh, it was entitled Islam and Other Faiths. And this is now available in the in a uh, book form as well. And this lecture has gone down in history uh, with regard to Islam and its relationship with other faiths uh, with regard to the future. And another thing to, to close that uh, cannot go without mention, of course, Basa Sahib, is the visit of Professor Margolith from the University of Oxford who came down to Qadian. And he had a sitting with Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu, Mufti Muhammad, uh, Sadiq Sahib radiallahu anhu, uh, you know, went to America and uh, laid so many foundations for these kind of relationships. But it's amazing that at that, that, that time, Muhammad the Sayal Sahib sat down and translated and acted as uh, it is said in Tariq Ahmadiyyat uh, Tarjaman, the official translator of the dialogue between the two, Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu and Professor Margolith of Oxford. And Professor Margolith was so impressed when he put the uh, question of the moon splitting to Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu, at which Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu answered so satisfactorily that uh, he permitted Hazrat Muslim to give him a message to take to the West. And what a brilliant message that was. Again, it all comes down to love for all, hatred for none. Hazrat Muslim radiallahu anhu said, go back to the Westerners and tell them to look at the teachings of Islam with an open heart, without the taint of prejudice and they will find that Islam is indeed a religion of love, brotherhood, and peace. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode of Ahmadiyyat, Roots to Branches. In today's episode, we saw how the undying efforts of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II anhu, to defend Ahmadiyyat grew day by day. And he took every single measure he possibly could to defend Ahmadiyyat and did so in a way in which there was no doubt left in anyone's mind. And he took many measures to complete this task, one of which was establishing a newspaper, which served the sole purpose of defending Ahmadiyyat by presenting its own irrefutable arguments. We then saw how God the Almighty placed immense blessings in the tabligh efforts of Hazrat Musaym al by establishing Ahmadiyyat in very far off places in ways which no one would ever have imagined. And then finally, we saw another testament to the great knowledge and proficiency 
of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih II, Azilat Allah Anhu, when a very high-ranking, a scholar of a very high-ranking university came to meet him in Qadian, and after having met him, he was left awestruck and was illuminated by a man who was much younger than him, proving once again that it was God the Almighty who himself took the undertaking of educating Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Talan. So with that, Jazakumullah for watching. Until next time, when by the grace of God, Ahmadiyat will have branched out even further. Assalamu alaikum.